Hey guys, welcome back to my brand new video. In this video, I'm going to be teaching you all Geography Chapter 12 Composition and Structure of the Atmosphere. Okay, so for this video, I'm using this book Total Geography Class 9 ICSC by Morningstar. Okay. So it is a chapter 12 as you can see if you have an old book then uh, it'll, just the color will be changed and some topics will be different that's it so nothing much and uh, not exactly different but there will be some extra things okay so so guys so about the introduction first we'll learn we'll read about the introduction okay the earth with its spherical shape is divided into three domains so the earth is divided into three parts lithosphere atmosphere and hydrosphere okay so these three domains together make up the biosphere so guys as i said lithosphere atmosphere and hydrosphere these three make up the biosphere okay so we'll read the next one they like matter these three domains exist in three states. They occupy space and possesses inertia. The lithosphere exists in solid state. So basically lithosphere, it exists in the, so this lithosphere exists in the solid state. Okay. And, and, the atmosphere is in the state of gaseous gaseous it's in a gaseous state and the hydrosphere is in the liquid state so hydrosphere is in a liquid state so each has a purpose in surrounding life on earth in gaseous state, the atmosphere is characterized by momentum and pressure. It regulates the heat around us. Okay. Now, what is blanket of air? Blanket of air. What is blanket of air? So, it's nothing, uh, it's nothing but it's known as atmosphere. So, the blanket of the air surrounding the earth is known as atmosphere. It exists in several layers around the earth. These layers become thinner at high altitudes. So, there are basically different levels, different layers uh, for the atmosphere. Like troposphere, stratosphere, then uh, we have... Uh, then mesosphere, thermosphere, exosphere, like that, ionosphere, like that. So we'll learn about that uh, further. So, therefore, one finds one finds it difficult to breathe as one goes up. So as we go up, like when the altitude is increasing, we start to uh, like. The, the oxygen level becomes less starts to become less as we as we as the altitude goes up okay that's why all the astronauts go with oxygen cylinders thing not only astronauts even the mountain climbers okay so this is because less air is pressing down from above okay 
Half of the total mass of the air is found below 5 km, touching the surface of the earth. So half of the total mass of the earth uh, of the air is found at the 5 kilometers just above the earth's surface 5 kilometers fr uh, from the ground to 5 kilometers it is found proper air over there after 5 kilometers the oxygen level uh, starts decreasing slowly then it is held close to the earth by gravity yeah so it is near because it is uh, the oxygen level is more because of the gravitational force the atmosphere protects the earth from harmful ultraviolet and infrared inf uh, infrared rays of the sun it has oxygen and nitrogen the life sustaining gases it helps in retaining the necessary warmth of the earth and helps in circulation of water vapor the source of rainfall so guys what they actually said is so this atmosphere the layer of the atmosphere protects us means the earth from ultraviolet rays yeah ultraviolet rays or any infrared rays which is coming from the sun that is because if there's a question why so you have to tell that is because it contains nitrogen and oxygen okay which tries to block the uh, ultraviolet rays okay then our next topic is composition of the atmosphere composition of the atmosphere okay so Let's read it. The atmosphere is a mixture of many gases and tiny solid particles. So this atmosphere, okay, this is basically full of uh, like mixture of so many gases and uh, some particles, solid particles. And a clean, dry exam uh, uh, sample of air is made up of 78 percent of nitrogen and 21 percent of oxygen okay so this clean dry sample of the air is made up of 78 percent of the nitrogen and the oxygen level is 21 percent okay the, the, uh, it is surrounded by which is surrounded by the earth so I have this pie chart over here, small one. So as it shows, nitrogen is 78% and oxygen is 21%. And uh, all others are just 1% as you can see over here. Yeah. So, yeah, oxygen gas helps in burning and breathing. Without breathing, sorry. Without breathing oxygen, most living things cannot survive. So without breathing oxygen, most living things cannot survive. Yeah, that's true. So if we breathe oxygen, what will happen? We live. If we, uh, we of course cannot breathe other the gases other than oxygen, right? Oxygen is the main source for uh, respiration, right? So, if oxygen is there, is not there, all the living things are dead. Yeah. So, nitrogen is a colorless inert gas. Now they are talking about nitrogen gas. Till now they were talking about oxygen. Now nitrogen. Nitrogen is a colorless inert gas and has no taste or smell. It dilutes the oxygen and slows down the process of oxidation. It is essential for all living things, but they cannot use it directly from the atmosphere. So, in some or the other way, it nitrogen is very useful for all the living things. Maybe even for us, but in some other way, some way. So, uh, 
they have dis they have described about nitrogen that it is colorless it is tasteless and it is like it has no smell so and it slows down it slows down the process of oxidation okay uh, then uh, plants obtain it from the soil and animals obtain nitrogen by eating plants or other animals so as i said uh, they get nitrogen like in some or the other way so plants obtain it from the soil and animals obtain nitrogen by eating the plants and other animals okay so these gases are responsible for life on earth so these two are the main important excuse me gases which are uh, like very important for the life to happen on earth to process on earth however they are insignificant with respect to the weather phenomena the remaining 1% of the air as i said the one per other all others are only 1% in the atmosphere so let's read about that the remaining 1% of the air is made up of number of gases like a lot of gases these include carbon dioxide, water vapor, helium, hydrogen, argon, and etc. CO2, carbon dioxide, is needed by plants for their survival, but only during night. Sorry, morning. Water vapor is responsible for all forms of precipitation and hence circulation of fresh water water vapor is added to atmosphere by evaporation from oceans lakes reverse transpiration from vegetation and respiration of animals S some particles like pollen from plants dust from dust storms ash from meteorites and volcanic eruption smoke from fire and soil part particles from seas are also present in the lower layer of the atmosphere so they are talking about the lower layer of the atmosphere so here uh, there are some pollen uh, uh, pollen uh, uh, pollen from plants dust dust storms and meteorites things like that and volcanic eruption okay so these are all present in the lower part of the atmosphere now we have to talk now we'll talk about the functions of the atmosphere functions of the atmosphere okay so the first one says that air has weight and exerts pressure being pressed down it always remains in contact with land and water so uh, they're telling that air has weight do you agree with that absolutely so air has weight and it exerts exerts pressure yeah, due to the gravitational force yeah being pressed down it always remains in contact with land and water so due to this gravitational pull or uh, its pressure exerted on the earth it is always uh, uh, with contact of with the land or the water okay so due to their physical contact exchange of gases between air land and water takes place on continuous basis so due to this uh, physical contact physical touch which is happening with air uh, with the atmosphere and the like the land or water whatever it is so uh, they exchange gases because of that so they exchange gases while uh, that contact is going on okay uh, yeah contact between air land and water takes place on the continuous basis so soil absorbs oxygen and nitrogen due to this contacts contact water vapors in air rise from oceans on account of evaporation so soil absorbs oxygen and nitrogen due to the due to this contact when this contact happens like this uh like due to the physical contact between gases uh, the plants 
soil absorb oxygen and nitrogen by this contact yeah so water vapors in air rise from oceans on account of evaporation carbon dioxide in air helps in absorption of heat and keeps the earth warm at night so carbon dioxide at night it's warm due to the carbon dioxide it helps to keep the earth warm during night so it absorbs heat and keeps the earth warm at night so because of this its composition the atmosphere is the most dynamic entity large masses of air are being moved up and down and across the surface of earth so the atmosphere is moved everywhere around the surface of the earth even right now but air atmosphere is colorless we can't see it so structure of the atmosphere so uh, i have to talk for that so guys here this earth i'll just write it down i know the drawing is bad but please don't judge it i i agree with so the first layer of the atmosphere is the t i uh, it's troposphere yeah t troposphere then the second layer is stratosphere the third layer mesosphere then the fourth layer there are two parts in the fourth layer thermosphere and the upper part is ionosphere then comes the last which is exosphere finish this is the uh, structure of the atmosphere so there are 1 2 3 4 five structures okay levels like layers of the atmosphere so first we'll talk about the troposphere so the troposphere is the low lower most and the densest layer its height varies varies from 18 km at the equator to 8 km at the poles so at the poles of the earth it varies 8 km and the equator it varies 18 km okay so characteristics what are the characteristics of this troposphere so 675% of the atmosphere is found in the troposphere so 75% of the whole atmosphere is found in this first layer yeah, that is a troposphere and its concentration decreases as we go higher from ground level so as we go higher the atmosphere co uh, concentration as uh, atmospheric concentration keeps decreasing as we go high okay so the troposphere is also characterized by regular decrease in temperature with altitude this decrease in temperature is known as normal lapse rate okay so as uh, is characterized by regular decrease in the temperature so due to the high altitude it keeps decreasing as we go up this is called the normal lapse rate so the average decrease it is 1 degree celsius average temperature decrease is 1 degree celsius for every 166 meter 166 meter altitude gain this temperature variation within the troposphere is responsible for many tuberculosis spelled it wrong it's tuberculosis <laughs> as a result of these tuberculosis all weather phenomena take place in this layer so all the weather phenomena takes place in this layer which is troposphere so the troposphere is heated more from below than above the upper limit of the troposphere is known as tropopause 
so the upper limit this line as you can see this is just an imaginary line so this layer the uh, out, uh, upper limit uppermost limit this is called the tropopause is like the, the word tells us tropopause t r t r o p o p a u s e tropopause so it pauses over there this layer pauses over there that's it then comes stratosphere so stratosphere extent this layer lies above the tropos tropopause it extends to a height of 50 km from a sea level so from a sea level of the earth it extends 50 kilometers okay so characteristics what are the characteristics of stratosphere the air is thin cold and dry over here the temperature is about minus 55 degrees celsius imagine how cold is that the ozone layer lies within the uh, stratosphere ozone is generally found between altitudes of 20 and 50 kilometers so this ozone layer lies within like somewhere inside this uh, from the stratopause uh, from the tropopause to the end of the limit of the strato uh, stratosphere somewhere over here is the ozone layer which is found like basically 20 to 50 kilometers of altitude so ozone observes the ultraviolet so now they are talking about what is ozone ozone layer ozone observes the ultraviolet solar radiation coming from above the isolation received from the sun is equal to that lost by it that is why the temperature of the layer is constant in the higher levels however temperature increases with height as we all know what is ozone layer ozone layer is just a layer which protects from the ultraviolet rays which comes from this sun yeah okay then temperature rises from minus 60 degrees celsius at the base of the stratosphere to zero degree celsius at stratos stratopause so it starts from minus 60 degrees celsius it goes to minus uh, zero degree celsius at the stratopause which is this is the stratopause the upper limit of the uh, stratos stratosphere is known as stratopause as i said this is the stratopause yeah then we'll go to mesosphere then thermosphere then ionosphere then exosphere then after in this video and uh, we in the next video we'll learn about the ozone and its depletion and global warming and uh, depletion of ozone layer then impact of global warming and uh, if we have time in that video we'll go to the next chapter which is uh, which is hydrosphere okay so for now let's continue with the mesosphere okay so excuse me mesosphere extent this layer lies above the stratosphere and it extends to a height of 80 kilometers from ground level so this extends from the ground level this extends 80 kilometers 80 kilometers this so characteristics the temperature in this layer decreases with the height and reaches a minimum of minus 110 degree celsius at the altitude of about 80 kilometer near mesopause where is mesopause this is mesopause over here this layer as you can see this is mesopause the upper limit of the layer as i said so due to the reflected sunlight from metro, uh, meteoric dust particles 
there are wispy clouds found in this layer. So in this layer, there are some clouds, misty clouds due to the meteoric atmosphere, which is present over here. If I could found, uh, yeah, as you can see, here is some meteorites in the picture. In the Mesasia. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Mesosphere. Then, uh, okay. Yeah, then uh, this is Mesosphere. Then comes the second last that is Thermosphere. So it extends from meso Mesopause and consists of two layers. So this therm uh, Thermosphere consists of two layers which is ionosphere and exosphere ionosphere and exosphere so basically ionosphere extend it extends up to height of 400 kilometers from the ground level from the sea level it extends from here from the earth sea level from here it goes up then it, it takes 400 kilometers to reach the ionosphere okay then characteristics ionosphere contains electrically charged particles called ions which create a sheet like display uh, of light known as aura borealis in the northern hemisphere and or and aurora australis in the southern hemisphere Ions reflect radio waves back to the Earth's surface. This enables us to have wireless communication. So here is where we get to uh, like all this wireless connection, communication, things like that. All is done from here due to the ions which is found over here. Uh, if I had a picture, yeah, it's over here. See, even all the satellites are here. Not all. Look, this is the uh, aura, aurora, and the uh, satellites and things like. That. Okay. Yeah. Where were we? So next comes exosphere. The last one. It is the uppermost layer in the structure of the atmosphere. It lies between 400 to 1500 kilometers above the earth. So it's from the earth, it's from the earth to the uh, exosphere, it takes 1400 kilometers. 400 to 1400 kilometers. 1500 500 sorry 5 it merges with it merges gradually with interplanetary uh, space in this layer layer temperature increases with height we know very little about the atmosphere extending beyond 640 km height from the sea level so they said that the temperature atmosphere sorry atmosphere like starts to decrease more when we reach 640 kilometers only so imagine the state of 1400 kilometers over here there will be very very less atmospheric pressure present present over not pressure atmosphere present over here then in the exosphere density becomes extremely low yeah, the main gases are lighter ones like hydrogen and helium. So the helium, you have seen any balloon with the helium gas inside it? Yeah, exactly. The helium, the gas inside, not the balloon, the gas inside it is found here. And even the helium. Uh, sorry, hydrogen. Sorry, hydrogen. Helium and hydrogen is found over in this exosphere layer. So, uh, 
so what did we learn in this video we learned about brief description about composition and structure of the atmosphere means an introduction then we learn blank about blanket of air then composition of the atmosphere functions of the atmosphere structure of the atmosphere and uh, they are in structure of the atmosphere we learned about troposphere stratosphere mesosphere thermosphere inside the atmosphere there are two types ionosphere and exosphere so these are all very important this will come for your exam so yeah in the next video i'll uh, teach you all about ozone and its depletion so and if we have time even we'll start hydrosphere so that's all i got for today i hope you enjoyed make sure you like subscribe and i'll meet you in the next video take care everyone and bye bye